It is my school bus, but the bus won't start. Because this fuel injection pump shit the bed. So I gotta take this out, get a new one. But it's buried in there. Getting close, but I had to take that off. Had to take that off. Had to take this off. Had to take this off. Had to take those guys out. And these ones. And those things. Ugh. Had to take those off. Had to take these off and that off. These guys. We'll get there. Woo! Bought this bus. Um, it's, a, it's an old Chevy. Uh, planning on doing a schoolie conversion. It's got a 6.5 liter uh, Detroit turbo diesel. Um, I wanted to do a diesel because they they last a lot longer. Usually, four or five hundred thousand miles um, on like a 6.5 liter like this. Uh, and so this has less than 200,000 on it. So the thought was if I'm going to be doing a bunch of work, turning this into like a little house, um, you kind of want that to be around for a while, right? Like also you get better gas mileage with the diesel. So, but I've found that there are, uh, a lot of videos on YouTube with the 6.5 liter turbo diesel, but they're all in trucks. The bus, it's based on the, uh, Chevy express vans. The, the hood is different, the engine is configured slightly differently, like the turbo's in the back instead of in the top on the front. Um, and I have ahead of me one of the larger repairs that is at the same time potentially common um, and also that you, know, you might be able to do yourself. Uh, the injection, the fuel injection pump, um, has gone bad. So with these engines, that seems to be something that they, it, it, tends, it tends to go bad, but there's a couple of things. Most of the time, 90% of the time, when it goes bad, what's, what's actually happened is that the, the PMD or the FSD computer that controls the injection pump has gone bad. Um, it overheats, it lives on the pump, which lives right on top of the engine. Uh, so it gets super hot in there and it, it overheats and blows out. And then without the computer, the injection pump won't work. That was the first thing I did. We replaced the computer. Um, it was already remote mounted. You can get these remote mounting kits. Um, so we put a new one in there, uh, didn't, didn't fix the problem. The next one is that there's a fuel solenoid. Um, I'll, sh I'll show you that. Uh, they usually don't go out, but we tested it and it wasn't completely clear whether it was working or not. So we went ahead and put a new one in. That also didn't fix the problem. So fuel injection pump. So this is a, it's a big deal. Refurbished one's gonna be something like 750, 750 bucks. Um, and I'm gonna, you know, try and do all the labor and stuff myself. Um, so save that. So let's get in here, show you what we're working with and get to it. There's um, two ways to get in here. I can show you from the front and the, the back. So let's see. So this wire is plugging into that um hexagonal bit on top of the round thing so that is the fuel solenoid um it's the, the fuel shutoff solenoid so it stops fuel from going into the pump when the engine's not turned on um that's plugged right into the top of the the injection pump which you can't even see from here right like that's that's as as close as it gets so um, I'll go around and show you from the inside, kind of the same thing, doesn't get much better. Um, but right now, so we're going to take the, the fan off. We need to loosen the belt. Um, this is the belt tensioner. I believe we're going to have to, the engine oil plugs down into here. 
you can't really see there's a couple bolts on either side here that need to come off um, and then the fuel injection pump is bolted uh, into the front of this uh, timing cover so um, today I'm just gonna be kind of tearing stuff apart and getting getting to it I've got some other parts I'm gonna have to figure out um, in the future let me show you this is the other part you don't have this in the trucks so this is my turbo and it's blowing here coming up here let's see so from here this is that same let's see if we can't the same uh, bit. So, uh, let's see if we can. It, you still really can't even see the pump, but that's that's where it is. So, I think I'm gonna have to get. Looks like this intake plenum off. I know you have to do that on the trucks. I'm not sure for sure if I'm gonna have to do that or not because so actually here you can this guy right here that is the pump so this is in the way that's the optical sensor I believe sometimes that's another one sometimes the optical sensor goes out and if you unplug that um then then the the engine will start. Um, I've tried that. It didn't work. So, uh, hopefully that helps somebody, but not me. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay. So one of the things I'm realizing is that this is probably going to be easier with this out of here. And in order to get to the fuel pump back there, and uh, I might have to undo this hose. It's hard to focus. Um, and so essentially I'm gonna need to drain the coolant from the system. So I was looking around, it was hard to find the actual, even with the, the fan shroud and the fan out of here, but down here in the bottom driver's side corner, there's this little tab. And when you get that pulled out a little bit, there's a hose that starts draining down. So I've just got a 12 quart bucket down there. Um, not positive, it's getting pretty full. Uh, but if it gets too close and I'll shunt it and find a new one. But anyway, once, once I get this drained, then I will have uh, the ability to start removing some hoses. There's a couple bolts on top of the pump. It's, it's hard to get my hand in there. But anyway, there's there's a bolt on this side and a bolt on the other side um, that I know are there, but I still haven't actually been able to get a finger on. So um, that's why I'm thinking this hose might need to come off. Anyway, um, let's get back to it. Okay, so it's a little more complicated than I had thought. Um, this is the turbo intake. So this is the turbo, the blower. Reroutes the air up from there, down there. So this intake and this, um, I guess you might call them plenums. Uh, they're you can see the fuel injection lines go under that. And so in order to actually get the pump out, I'm gonna need to take these two plenums off. Um, so it's gonna be fun. Um, 
at this point I'm just you know chugging away taking taking bolts out slowly slowly so anyway back at it okay so we've got the belt loose the oil um, I don't know where you add the oil off so this is where so in here you've got this plate the plate spins around and there's three bolts that are in this plate the you can see on the other side here is the well here is the um injection pump so these bolts bolt into the injection pump and you've got to take all three of them out um and the way there's a also there's a grommet a plastic or a rubber grommet on here um that you're going to want to take off uh when you get the oil tube off of there uh, there's got to be a better term for that but anyway um there's not too much space and you want to be able to get your finger in here on the edge of the bolt when it comes out to make sure that you don't drop your bolts in there you drop your bolts in there you've got you know some big problems so the way you do this is down here you've got the harmonic balancer uh, with the fan off you get a breaker bar on here these are 15 millimeter um, nuts you get a breaker bar on here and as you let's see if I can as you spin the breaker bar that's gonna move very slowly it's hard to do with one hand um, doo -doo. okay it's on there again so as you spin the breaker bar it's gonna move a little bit. So you're gonna rotate that, take all three bolts out. Um, and I know on the truck, there's two bolts on the side of the top, but I haven't been able to find them. And I'm wondering if they might not exist on the, the van bus chassis. So um, we'll see, this might be, all we need to do. Anyway, um, I'm gonna take this last bolt out and keep going. Okay, so one of the things is that this guy has to come out. So you're gonna have to, this mounting bracket normally goes in here, bolted on here, attaching to these two. You gotta get this guy totally loose so that you can get that out, feed that that part through this little opening. So get this out and then that allows you to get to the mounting bolts on the pump on the, the back side as opposed to the ones up in front. Cool, cool, cool. Here, once you do that, you can actually kind of see what the fuck is going on here. So go down here, I scratch this mark in the timing lined up with the this straight angle so that straight angle is attached to that mark right um and then i realized why i couldn't move this before there's three bolts there's a bolt down here where my index finger is pointing there's a bolt here right on top and there's another one down on this side, pretty far down. I'm trying to just loosen the bolts a lot so that they stay in position. Um, I think that should work. So, but anyway, so I've got two loose. I'm about to loosen the last one and try to pull this thing out. And then we'll see what happens. Wish me luck. <clears throat> okay, so in order to get the fuel injection pump out, 
you also have to remove the fuel injection lines. So these are two of the fuel injection lines. There's one, and you can see the other one back there, or trace the, the line that goes back to it. So this is a V8, so there's four on either side. Most of these are pretty easy to get to. One, two, three, you can get here. One, two, three, you can get here. Come out, come around. Uh, where is it? This fourth one, let's, is that it? This fourth one, you can get to here. This one is hard to get to. So eventually we're gonna take this out. Um, but in the meantime, um, you can just move it to the side and reach around and get to it. You can't really see it this way, but you can, here if I feed the phone through, I'm not sure if uh, we're actually getting a view, but that's the that's the way to it. So, yep. Okay, so in order to get this right passenger side air plenum off, um, you've got to take all the bolts off all the way around. This bolt was problematic because this vacuum seal pump was in the way of this nut. So I'm like, okay, I've got to take the turbo set off. Um, I started trying to take this off. I ended this down here, I ended this over here. Um, I loosened this bolt down here and essentially was no closer. So I start looking at taking the, the actual turbo fan pump itself off. As you can see, there's two bolts right here. So I think all I needed to do was take off these two bolts, that loosens this up, and then to loosen that bottom bolt so that this can move just a little bit. And all you need is to be able to move this a little bit to get the, the wrench on there. So I got the wrench on there and now that second air plenum is loose. All right. Okay, this cable bundle, I'm gonna be able to take out. Okay, finally got it out. Um, we've got just some plastic bags covering the uh, where the covering the holes into the engine where the air plenums um, push that the turbo air in <sighs> you can see here like those are the the three bolts that attach to the three nuts that um i didn't know about initially that you've got to get out and then looking at this there's essentially on the injection ports, there's this bar. So there's two nuts on each side. See here and here. Um, so you've got to get those out before this comes off. Also, this bit was attached to the oil dipstick. Um, so there's just like a little, a little bolt you got to take out but um i didn't know about that so i was kind of pulling on it like why is this stuck why is this stuck also um you guys are gonna want to take heed and not make the same mistake i did this guy so there's a plug that plugs in right here and trying to yank this out i broke this off so i'm gonna have to find a way to replace that um, I'm hoping it's something that just screws on there. So we'll see. Um, but I am relieved to be this far. So.
Let's go. Okay, we're getting this back in here. Um, we replaced the gaskets. Um, there's a triangular one up top in between the pump and the timing area. I'm not sure exactly what to call that. Um, and yeah, so now just working on getting these uh, injection ports plugged back together. So. And now that we've gotten everything put back together, the new fuel injection pump in there, um, now there's gonna be air in the lines. So the first thing we need to do is bleed the lines. Um, so this is a 97, I believe 96 and after, you just turn the key into the, you don't start the engine, but you just turn it into the, the on position that activates the lift pump. And from there, let's see. You can come up here and this guy is uh, the line bleed for the line that runs from the tank to the, the fuel injection pump. So that'll clear that of air, but then the fuel lines are still full of air. So what you need to do is start the engine, run, you try to start the engine. It won't start because there's the fuel is not getting there. Um, but you need to leave, sorry, in reinstalling this, you want to leave all of the fuel injection ports loose. So get them, get them finger threaded on there, but leave them loose. Then we're gonna start the engine, run it, let it crank, da, 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 da. Um, 10, 12, maybe 15 seconds, as long as you feel comfortable um, letting your starter go without frying it. Stop it, wait for 10 minutes, let the starter cool down, start it again, same thing, repeat. What you're looking for is for fuel to be bubbling up from these fuel injection ports. So when you see fuel, then you you turn the engine off and you're gonna go ahead and tighten those up. So um, once they're all tightened up, now, I mean, you've got confirmation that fuel is getting to all the ports, should be in business, should be good to go. So looking forward to testing this baby. Okay. Feels good. 